very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. My name is Max Olwasika. I'm still with Ken Andrew Malinkombo, chair and founder of Comras Rugby Football Club. And also, Kenya Rugby Union director is joining us this particular afternoon. Good to see you, Malimo. How have you been? No, I'm okay. You uh, all right? Sante sana kunikaribisha. Yeah, uh, okay. Sante I'm sana kukuja well. pia. Yeah. So Vancouver 7 is happening tonight. Before that, someone just SMSed me, yeah. asking Malima about his opinion with regard to uh, an announcement from Confederation of African Football regarding more international sports center Kasarani that it is not suitable mm -hmm. to host FIFA accredited matches. What's your opinion as a, a veteran sportsman? I think that's a, a huge dis it's a disappointment, uh, especially at this uh, time when we've been uh, in this competition for many years, over 50 years of competition, and uh, we don't have um, um, like an accredited stadium that can be able to host um, the, uh, they can be able to host matches and uh, meet the international standard. I think this 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 is a wake up call and uh, the stakeholders of uh, the game they need to go down and uh, be able to look at that and sort that one for all. Because I remember uh, during the last campaign when the the NAG government and uh, the Jubilee government were campaigning and saying that they're going to introduce uh, every, every county should have an international uh, meet standard or uh, stadium. So when we are now looking at these two stadiums, the big stadium, Kasarani, that we have in the country, and uh, one of the biggest stadiums in East Africa, they are saying it cannot be able to meet the standard. It's a big disappointment for the country, and it's bad news for us. Okay, now what does that necessarily mean for World Cup qualifier beating Kenya and Mali, considering we are set to play in the next few months, and uh, if Kasarani is not, you know, in a standardized situation to host FIFA accredited matches, is there any other apart from? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think there's any other because uh, Nyayo, again, I, I think it will be the same sport as Kasarani, you know. But as he said, it's been way too long for Kenya to, to lack an international, a, a stadium with international standards. It's been way too long. And uh, it's not even the first time. CAF, I think, was supposed to host Chan for them, and we couldn't host Chan. And it's a, a tournament for local African based players. We couldn't host that. And now FIFA has, has said, and CAF has said, we can't host FIFA quality matches. And it is just so sad. Uh, for the match, <laughs> we, it's just in limbo. We just have to wait and see what happens with it. Yeah, yeah of course, uh, just a sneak preview of, to digress a little bit to football, but we sticking to matters. Rugby Vancouver 7 is happening tonight. Kenya, mm. looking forward to put their predicaments behind following what happened. Sort of a horrible show uh, during Tokyo Olympics, though they managed a ninth a ninth place yeah, finish yeah. and uh, <coughs> looking forward to ensure that all goes well ahead of Vancouver Sevens tonight. It's the first leg of HSBC World Seven Series, right? And we're playing teams like Mexico, Spain and uh, uh, the last game of the group. South Africa. South Africa. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow morning. Yeah, sure. First of all, Nelson Oyo now getting the armband for overall captainship. Yeah. You are take, does he have what it takes to replace Andrew Amonde who Say that he has played sufficiently for Kenya, and now it's high time to hang the boots. Yeah, uh, well, uh, it depends on uh, when you see how Nelson Ayo has been declared in the team. You know, he came in from the age grade uh, rugby over Nakuru, and if Nakuru. Nakuru is uh, one of uh, the clubs that have, very, have, have a very nice uh, age grade program. And having come from that age program and then jailing well and uh, making it to the national team, I think uh, he, 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 meets, he meets the, the criteria of being uh, the, the national, uh, a national team. You remember also when uh, Kenya won in 2016 in Singapore. Yes. I think he also on the score sheet scoring. So he, he, he has been the team and uh, he understands he's mature enough uh, to take over and um, uh, lead the boys uh, in Vancouver 7 and uh, the upcoming uh, series. So so a man who has risen through the ranks and I know when you're speaking like that you're speaking from that aspect of yourself who's been yeah. passionate about youth development and ensuring that growth of young people is ensured locally yeah, 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 it's true. Uh, I've, I've been, the way of saying I've been that particular program for the development and uh, being also the director of development, uh, it's good to see that uh, uh, the path of the players is being monitored and they go up to the national team. And I think that that's, that's the way how the game is supposed to be managed, where the players come from um, the, the, the age groups and they go up, up to, to the national team through the, the clubs that uh, nationwide, going to the Kenya Cup teams and uh, playing for the national team. I think that that's a big achievement for for the coaches who are doing that great job of uh, enabling these players to meet all the path, the, 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 all the, the, the pathway until to they play for the national team. Um, when you look at the Vancouver 7, the way you're saying, uh, we, we did play well at um, 
at uh, Olympics, despite just a few errors, and I think it costed Kenya. But when you look uh, the way they played and how they lost the matches, yes. they, they, I think it was it was a, a team that had a very small margin uh, in their in their in their all their matches at the the Olympic, and also having lost to Ireland and winning against Ireland again and Japan, I think that that was a good plus. That tells us uh, if we could have had more games, I think the boys had uh, found the rhythm and they could have uh, won uh, more matches. But Olympics have few teams, uh, that's only 12 teams. So if you lose one match, uh, probably you are, you, are, you, are, you are in a very difficult position to make it to the upper now, to, to the next level. Uh, but when you look at Vancouver the way it is, and uh, the core teams uh, being um, uh, USA, Canada, and, uh, South Africa, Kenya, and uh, England, Ireland, uh, you find that Kenya stands um, a big chance of uh, making it to the main cup and probably also lifting the Vancouver. Depends on how they'll be able to, uh, to execute uh, their game plan. So our first match this particular evening is against Spain at 8 at 1 p.m. East African time. Then later on, a few hours later, 11.42 p.m., we're playing against Mexico. Mexico, Mexico, which is an invitational side. Yeah. Then on Sunday morning at 3.35 a.m., for those people who are nocturnal, we can catch that particular action against South Africa. The heavyweights, 3.35 a.m. And that game coming yeah. in the wake of South Africa having lost against... Uh, Australia. Australia. Uh, yeah, the Springboks. <laughs> I think it's a big disappointment for the world champion uh, to lose the match today. And probably um, the coach, Jack Snapper, might be struggling after uh, uh, Erasmus having uh, left uh, the national team and becoming the, di uh, the director of rugby of South Africa. Uh, but all in all, uh, so, so sometimes it's also good to lose so that now you go and look where you've gone wrong and prepare. And I remember South Africa from the time they won the World Cup in uh, 2007, you know, they struggled until 2019 and they came and found the rhythm and when they say now 20, 18 months to 18, 18 months preparation for the World Cup so they brought in a lot of um, a lot of players and uh, integration and they're able now to execute and uh, win the game but when I watch the game today uh, you know South Africa is also trying to kind of change their mode of uh, play and that's where it probably is affecting him because now passing off the ball it has not been part of South Africa when you look at how they won the the, the World Cup uh, but this time round, you find that they are kind of uh, playing the Australian, uh, Australian mode of, uh, of the game and uh, New Zealand of passing the ball instead of kicking and, and uh, setting the set pieces. I think that's where uh, South Africa has been affected uh, much. But all in all, I know they'll, they'll come back. We still have one more weekend. They're playing again New Zealand in the two weekends, consecutive weekends. Probably they'll come back. <laughs> Despite though I've seen uh, New Zealand is a, strong, uh, it's a very strong team. They have made changes today and you see now they are winning against Argentina again today. And Ken, of course, ahead of Mexico, the captain Nelson Oyo has released some statements saying that the team is generally in good mood and are ready to tackle our pool, which is, to us, we have a feeling that uh, it's very open for us to reach the knockout stage and contending for the cup. I think mm -hmm. that is a, a, a statement coming from someone who looks like a leader, right? Yeah, yeah, and he, he has to take the take up the mantle now, lead the national team. The others who have left have left. It's now up to Oyo to lead this uh, this new crop of players because I've seen their debut, debutants in this side. Yeah. I think uh, five going into the v Vancouver series right now. And also um, this Vancouver series and anything they play right now, I think they, they, they lead up to the World Cup and Commonwealth Games. So yeah. they'll be key in pre preparation for those for those tournaments. Yeah. And it's yeah. also good to uh, observe that, you know, for a player like Nelson Oyo, is will be in charge of, you know, heavyweight players, Colin Sinjera, mm. William Baker, yeah. now leading the troops to another level, just like mm. uh, for your team in Europe and United, having Harry Maguire to be captaining someone like Cristiano Ronaldo. Lionel Messi at PSG is not the one of the arm and someone is in charge. So yeah. I think you have to up your game to ensure that you lead your troops well. Isn't it, Malim? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. But now it depends on uh, the team play and how, you know, uh, at times also the players also involved in terms of uh, choosing the, the captain. And the captain is actually the big role model uh, yes. because now he's the link man and this controls the game in the, in the pitch. Uh, but when you look at uh, the way the, uh, the team is, you find these are also players who've played uh, together for, for long. Even the deputants also yes. have been there. Uh, Mark Wemoy has been in and out. Maisi, uh, um, um, Kayonga. You know, these are also players who've played well for their clubs and also the, the, the sevens and fifteens. And uh, they have come from a very competitive um, uh, league that uh, resumed after uh, 
long time. So I, I, I do feel that um, they are ready and they will take on. And also, remember that we also have uh, players who've just come from Olympics and a big, big chunk of them. We have Jeff Oloch, Alvin, Alvin Otieno. Uh, we have Umwa and also we have Ambaka, who is also doing well, professional player now in, uh, in Russia. Uh, so these are the players who've been together and uh, well, they're training. I know the coach has uh, executed, he has a game plan for how they're going to play against all the teams. Deputants are always, uh, sometimes they cost surprises, <laughs> Spain. <coughs> yeah, sometimes we've won, they have also, Spain has at times won against Kenya in the circuit, even though they've been an invitation aside. Um, and uh, Mexico, is, uh, it's, it's okay, I saw them play in the, yeah, in the, in the, in the the, you know, okay, there is a, <coughs> a tournament that was held in uh, South America and they also played well. It's a coming team. Germany also, it's an upcoming team. Uh, Hong Kong has been a regular and they've been hosting and we've seen how they play. Uh, so when you look at the core teams, uh, the, uh, Canada, the USA, and um, Ireland and England, uh, so Kenya stands a uh, chance and uh, South Africa is a threat also. <coughs> and you see how South Africa normally plays their, their rugby. They are fast in terms of uh, the set pieces and they change their game at a, at a high pace. So it starts upon now the defense on how to work on it and stop the, such a teams. Uh, we were very aggressive in the attack. After Tokyo Olympics, there were some <coughs> comments that came from Nam Kosino me, the man in charge of the National Sevens team, Shuja, that there should be a national dialogue on Kenya's playing style. Because since 2016, we've had like four coaches and each one of them comes with their different style of play. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to some extent now, players get into confusion on how to play because there is no uniform style of play for Kenya Sevens. Yeah, and I think uh, having a style of play contributes more to the team having an identity. And even the young players who are looking to break into the national setup will understand what they need to learn before they step into the national setup. So I think the union should actually um, come up with a, a, a style and uh, ask the coaches they hire to try and uh, replicate it and also ask the local coaches of the local clubs to try and incorporate this certain style into the, into the other levels of rugby in Kenya so that when someone gets selected to go and play for the national team, uh, even though they, are, they, they might be debutants, they already know what is expected of them so it, it is easier for them to gel and have an identity and understand each other. And it is glad that you've mentioned about the union and we have the union representative in Malim himself. Yeah, yeah. Are you also looking forward to doing the same and ensuring that you actualize uh, that policy? Okay, well, uh, okay. when you look at um, our Kenyan rugby, Kenyan rugby, we have the same trainers and the fine and most of uh, the clubs they are held by the local coaches. And these coaches, they go under training of uh, the same, same trainers. Yes. So uh, finding a different uh, rhythm, it's, it's, it's quite diff it's, it's, it's not it's not that big. Uh, uh, the only time I saw probably when Mike Friday came in. Yes. Uh, but all the local coaches, we've seen uh, the later Imba, we have seen now uh, Cheng, we have seen Pau and uh, Namkos. You find that they, they, they are, uh, Nani, uh, the, co the coach of Mamba. Now, now you see when, when you look when you look at how they they, they play, uh, if they, they, their mode of play is uh, not that uh, different. They, there's a very very small small margin, and uh, that's why you see every player who comes in from a local uh, circuit, it, uh, it gels on well with the international team and they play. Yes. So uh, even when you look at country like New Zealand, I, I remember uh, when when they were playing uh, Super Rugby, and Super Rugby was. Uh, was was also was also at uh, the same time they they were also playing the championship and find that the national the the, the 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 coaches said now they'll allow the players to go and play for the super rugby because the national coaches the teams wanted back their players but now they say now these players they are going to play under the same mode over uh, the game so allow them to go back to the the the, 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 the teams to play for the super rugby because they wanted to win and they, uh, I find that they also about the issue of the sponsorship attached to those particular teams but they were to be put under the same condition as the national team so it's it it, it it is it is practical and it's uh, it's doable uh, when it comes to the coach. So long as the coach requests about requests the the the, 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 the teams, the coaches of uh, the local teams, these players should be under this particular condition. It, it happens uh, because these are the same condition, they're in the same environment, uh, they, are, they have gone through the same training. So I don't see if it's a big deal there. 
And uh, Kenya Rugby has been on the forefront in terms of uh, training the coaches. And like now when we have a good program for training of these particular coaches, at least for them to have a level two uh, for those ones who are working with the elite teams and even the small teams. So we are building our capacity and that one will be able to probably in the next one year, we'll see a very big margin in terms of uh, in terms of our capacity in, uh, in, in, of, in of, 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 of officiating and coaching. And considering those are words coming from a coach, it makes sense. It means it's so appropriate and relevant that it's high time that it gets uh, into actualization sooner than later. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, it's happening already. <laughs> but now, okay, I think what the coach was saying, we should uh, try to instill that yes. uh, in the local, in, the, in, the, in, our, in, our, in our local game because it's, it happens in our local game. Today, you'll get a player from uh, Oilers, the national team, and that player will be able to gel very fast because the, the mode of play, the mode of training for this particular coach is the same because if Kenya Rugby Union has uh, brought a program for the, for the training of these coaches and, it, and they're training them under the same uh, kind of... Um, ki kind of um, execution of uh, the game of the coaching program yeah wow and of course Ken looking forward to see how that happens because it will be a good thing for rugby in Kenya and considering Kenya is a heavyweight in African continent alongside of course South Africa not only in Africa but even overseas when yeah. Kenya is playing but uh, are we looking forward to playing against uh, Mike Friday I've seen US yeah. <laughs> he's also at the Vancouver Sevens yeah, it depends with the, the results on the how they are uh, and pairing, and pairing going, on, forward. Uh, going forward after the, the, the first pool matches. And uh, in, I'm sure because one of the core teams, when you look at those teams, Kenya is uh, one of the big teams there, South Africa, USA and England. So probably they'll be able to meet in the next phase of uh, the game. Someone was asking me, should we regret at some point having parted ways with Mike Friday and leaving him to go coach US? I was unable to respond to such question because I had to contemplate uh, deeply before responding, which I did not. I don't know. If you are the one Malimu, yeah. how would you have responded that l losing Mike Friday was a huge blow set back to Kenyan rugby? Okay, the way I look at it, not really, because uh, Mike Friday left and uh, the local coaches picked up. And uh, the local coaches even did much better. Yes. Uh, if and Mike Friday was here and he was not able to win one or even of the circuits. The late Benjamin Naimba won Benjamin, Singapore Sevens. Yeah, uh, yeah Namcos came in and uh, went to Vancouver Sevens finals and also in uh, Hong Kong uh, Seven finals. So the local coaches find they have done well, even better than uh, the, the foreign coaches. And by the way, under Namcos, we surpassed a 100 point mark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That so had never been witnessed before under any other coach. Under coach, yeah. But you know, we also remember the number of legs for also increased from six to yes. six to ten. Yeah, but uh, coach, the local coaches are, are doing well, and uh, that's the way because they also understand the players. They are with the players, the same environment, and uh, they also conditions of uh, these players. They, are, they really understand them, and uh, it's easy for them to work with the, the players. Anyone who comes in, I uh, find that it gives get, uh, be, Kenya gets the results, uh, the required results in the in the, in the national circuit. Ken, your question for the director? Uh, it's just uh, one question, and it's based off what I said earlier. Earlier, the Commonwealth and uh, World Cup are coming up and yeah. uh, obviously before the Olympics uh, they had not played as much as they would have liked but right now after the Olympics they did what they did in the Olympics right now they'll have a few tournaments leading up to the Commonwealth and the World Cup and uh, how do you think uh, they will perform there and what are we to expect as fans of rugby? Uh, okay, I think now th things are working out well. Uh, I remember now the uh, last season uh, we didn't play a lot of rugby and but now we've played Kenya Cup just come to an end and KCB won um, uh, two weeks ago and uh, fi new fixtures are coming up Safari 7s I've also seen yes. in the media yeah, it's coming and that's been a very good handing ground for the coaches and also for the local teams uh, in terms of preparation and uh, when the teams play in those particular um, tournaments you find they really improve and uh, this Vancouver in the next uh, November 26th and uh, 3rd of uh, December we'll also be having Dubai Dubai 7s then now uh, we resort to 2022 season which will be coming up in, 20, in the year 2022 I think before that Kenya could have played uh, quite a number of matches and uh, coach Coach, the coach will have uh, seen which is the best team now to take it to, to the Commonwealth. And then uh, it, later on in the year, uh, we'll be having World Cup in uh, South Africa and the African continent. Uh, Kenya, I hope, Kenya has done well, so well in a uh, World Cup uh, competition. So we expect it now to carry it on. Uh, 
the way they played in Russia and uh, went to the semi-finals. So I expect probably this time Kenya to go in the final and do the magic they did in Singapore and uh, the, the, the cup to remain the African continent. And almost every team uh, locally, as far as several sporting disciplines are concerned, football, rugby, basketball, they are chasing for a place in the global showpieces, World Cups. And I know it will be prestigious for Shuja to make it to the World Cup, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Simba, Simba or Shuja? Shuja will be at the Simba World Cup. Yeah, the 15th. Yeah, yeah. The 15th. yeah, yeah. yeah we, we expect, because now we've played the first match, we played against Senegal. And also we played, uh, was it, uh, I've forgotten the other team, uh, Zambia. And we, we lost to Senegal, but we won against Zambia. And uh, we, now we're in pool games. And uh, the teams will be preparing well uh, for that. And Kenya, you find that it's done well. Last time we went to the Ripper Judge, and uh, the boys now they have gone to the next level. So this time around, we'll be able now to execute and uh, be able to, to qualify. Uh, you've seen, I've seen how the, the other countries have played. Uh, they are yet to, 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 to be where the Kenyan, the Kenyan rugby is now today. I've seen Zam, uh, Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, which have been our rival competitor, and also Namibia. Namibia also losing their, their first match. So we expect Kenya to do well, and uh, the real time now is coming uh, for them to qualify. I hope this time round we'll make it, we we'll qualify direct instead of going for the repeat like what we did last time and uh, make it to France 2023. We already have the players for 2023 and like uh, for 2027 where I'm setting up now the, uh, the program for the players we'll play in 2027 and 2031. And you've seen how Kenya Rugby you know, has taken rugby to primary school. When take rugby to primary school, that tells us Kenya Rugby is now preparing on the players who will be able to play in 2027 World Cup, in 2031 World Cup, 2035 World Cup, and uh, 2039 World Cup. These are the players who go through the age grade uh, program. And uh, we've set all the programs. Last, week, uh, to, uh, last month we also launched under 20. This is a program that has not been, uh, been there. But we've launched under 20 program for the ladies uh, so that we have the team that will play for in the Olympics, in the coming Olympics of 2024 and World Cup 2025. Remember, the ladies team, the number has been increased to 16 teams. So whether you like it or not, Kenya will be able to, Lioness will be at the Olympics or it will be at the World Cup of, uh, of 2025. And that's why we have the under 20 program and also under 16 program. So we RDOs are really doing a good job across the country. The regional rugby uh, development of SAS, they are selecting the elite players on all the age grades so that we now put these elite players under program where we'll be able to monitor uh, their skills and development. So by the time comes when Kenya now is uh, ready to take on uh, the, the, the rest of the world, we'll be having skillful players who will go and give her the right results. So proper preparations in advance before then, if we have to make it. Yeah, but and they have already started. They have already started, and when you look at uh, these successful countries like South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand, they have a very vibrant uh, program uh, for the youth. And uh, every time we've seen under uh, 20 uh, qualifying for the World Rugby Junior World Rugby Junior uh, Trophy, uh, having won against uh, Madagascar here. So that's that's that tells us that uh, we already have setting up our team that will be able to play uh, in 2027 uh, World Cup. Because now these are the guys, just like uh, uh, when you look at, uh, uh, sorry, uh, New Zealand. New Zealand, like of Mackenzie, uh, like of uh, Paranea. You see, those are players who played at the World Cup, uh, the Junior World Cup, and now they are representing the country. Because we have a very youth, a good youth structure uh, program for the game. So, Ken, yeah. uh, finally, as we uh, come to the finishing line of this particular uh, noble discussion, Kenya, yeah. Yeah. just like you know, the captain for the Shuja said that you know they are looking forward to getting to the knockout stage. Yeah. How strategically are they supposed to approach these games, considering they are playing sort of minus mm. <laughs> during the first and second game before they take on heavyweight South Africa, which means they should win the first two games in order to seal a quarterfinal berth. I don't know yeah. how schematic can yeah, Namco's yeah. approach these games. You know, like even though. They, they are said to be minus, you know. <laughs> we, we saw what happened to Man United and PSG. We can't really call them minus, but... Uh, Young boys. For, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, for Kenya to play the first two games, you know, they should ex they should win them, you know, to actually show that they are serious to then want to really go to the main cup final. They faced uh, South Africa after facing Spain and Mexico. I think uh, the Mexico game is the one which many people fancy Kenya will actually go ahead and really win it. The Spain one might be a, really, a little bit tricky, but 
For the first two games, I think Kenya, they don't need to be studied. They just need to express themselves how they usually do. We know they are a good uh, rugby side. They can play really well. They just have to leave it out there and uh, look forward to face South Africa, who will be a tougher test than the two, of the two first games. From coaching perspective, do you think it's possible? Are you also reading from the same script with Nelson Oyo that, you know, we can get to that level of Vancouver Sevens? It's yeah. been a minute since, you know, we even got into the semi-final yeah. stages of just BC World Seven Series. Yeah, well, okay, when you look at those teams, the teams that have uh, come from a very good competition is uh, Kenya and South Africa, who have just come from the Olympics. So they have a head start. And when you look at the statistics also, against uh, uh, Spain, Kenya have an upper hand, and also South Africa, especially when we meet South Africa at the last matches. We've won against them uh, in Cape Town at the home ground, and the fans got disappointed. So I know the coach has <coughs> prepared the boys well, and they will be able to take it on, and they are focused on uh, doing well at uh, the Vancouver before they cross over next week at uh, Edmond, the same tournament in uh, Canada. The new Kenya Cup, a friend of mine was telling me that now it's an inclusive tournament, which means the, uh, all teams are set to participate. He's a fan of Homeboys Rugby Football Club saying that now KCB has got a new, uh, you know, strong opponent who can beat them in the finals of Kenya Cup, not like a brass. <laughs> Do you buy uh, that joke? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, well, what, when it comes to the game uh, and sports, it depends on how you prepared yourself. Uh, you focus on winning and losing. And uh, if uh, they have prepared well, uh, if they have prepared well, I know uh, they'll bring up a very tough uh, competition. Uh, you remember the two teams, KCB and uh, Cabras, they prepared well and we saw good rugby being played at the finals. So if uh, the team will be able to prepare well, then we expect also to see uh, good rugby uh, towards the end of uh, next season, of the coming season. <laughs> that yeah. was a miraculous <coughs> performance, Ken. Sort mm. of uh, comeback of comebacks, because our mm. team is winning 20-0 yeah. at you know, halftime, then you know, your opponent decides to mm. bounce back and you know, mm. beat you and thoroughly lift the title. Yeah, but you know, that's the beauty of sports. It's, it's never done. You know, mm -hmm. you might think you're leading, you might think you're the better team, but there's always a comeback somewhere for one team that they'll never forget about it. Mm -hmm. And that's just the beauty of it. Yeah. And Safari 7 is back also? Yeah, the, the way he's saying, uh, it's yes. about um, how the team has been paired, the mental strength of the team, and how they'll hold on up to the last minute. And uh, remember South Africa, how they were punishing people at the World Cup. Yes. They, they had what we call the bomb squad. The players who could come in second half and destroy the other opponents. Uh, so... If the coach, the tact has how the coach uses his uh, tactics uh, in the game, and probably uh, Nani also used the same uh, Curtis, and Curtis has been a very experienced coach yeah, also. Sure. Uh, he just won uh, with under 20 uh, recently, and also having retained the cup. He's been at the finals, and uh, remember when we were discussed here last time, we said uh, he's the master of uh, the finals. Uh, he can cause a surprise, and indeed uh, he did that. Yeah, Safari Sevens, uh, I think we are gearing up and um, Kenya has done well. We expect them to do well against this time, against the invitational teams. And uh, I know how it been, people have been uh, away for, people have not been uh, watching rugby for, for long. Uh, so it's a good opportunity uh, for the game to be back on the home soil again and uh, bring up the spirit of uh, the game. I know people, most people have seen social media, how people are exchanging and preparing uh, for this particular big a tournament coming up. And this time round happening at Nyayo? At Nyayo National Stadium. National Stadium yeah, away yeah. from traditional RFU uh, grounds. Yeah. Nyayo yeah, has been good. Yes. I remember we, we hosted Pates there. And um, uh, Lioness also, the, the repercharge match against Colombia. Uh, it was at Nyayo. Even the Simbas also played their match, the World Cup qualifying against uh, Zimbabwe and, uh, and, and Senegal. So it's a good stadium and a good place to be. And also for the health protocol for yeah. COVID and all that, it's, um, it's a good place to play rugby. Malibu, generally we are parting shots with regards to what is happening in international rugby locally. I know we are uh, uh, doing our level best to ensure that we get to another level in terms of growth and development. But your general thoughts in terms of rugby at this time of COVID-19 pandemic where the situation yeah. might be a little bit tough, but we keep going. 
Yeah. No, it's it's good to see that <coughs> rugby is back. Sorry, uh, rugby is back, and we were able to see Kenya Cup uh, f complete the season uh, successful. I think that's um, a good plus, and also the se upcoming season uh, coming up. And if our world goes well, we'll have to have even the, the lower leagues also uh, playing uh, the, the championship and the nationwide. Uh, it's good. Uh, it's the national circuit is uh, disappointing. You know, to see the giants of. Uh, uh, Kenya playing against the others, um, that's Australia, New Zealand and Fiji, uh, not uh, coming to Vancouver Sevens and uh, Edmond. I think that's um, a huge disappointment. I could have wished to see <coughs> Kenya versus Argentina at the finals again, the way they what did the other time. What is this attributed to? How come <coughs> they are not participating? Uh, I, I, okay, I think the issue of uh, the government and uh, the COVID protocols uh, issues, uh, you went, you went uh, the, even the championship, there was to the championship cup was to be delayed. Uh, South Africa, they were meant to travel to South Africa, uh, one uh, home and away against uh, uh, New Zealand traveling to South Africa also and uh, home and away uh, Australia. But because of that, you find that now the government restriction. Now they decided the tournament should only be held in one venue, and that's why South Africa and Argentina had to travel to Australia. So the, uh, just just the issue of uh, the, the pandemic, but. Hopefully, things will be okay ahead as we move on. Can your last question for uh, the director? My last question is, uh, we've seen uh, CAF talking about Kasarani not being able to uh, have FIFA quality games there. Mm. But, and rugby has held some of its tournaments at Kasarani and Nyayo, and they seem to be in the same state. For rugby, uh, how confident are you that uh, coming mm, rugby arenas and uh, fields will be able to host international tournaments? In the future. Uh, I, okay, uh, the way I've seen, it, I think once you meet the requirements, uh, the the World Rugby requirements for hosting of the game, which uh, Kenya has um, expertise in that particular area, uh, well trained expertise in terms of organizing of the tournaments. Uh, once you meet the criteria, we'll be able to play. And we've never had issues. We've played. We hosted parties uh, recently. World Cup qualifying. Uh, Kenya hosted. Also, Lioness also hosting uh, the, uh, the, uh, Colombia here for the repercharge. Uh, so with rugby, everything is okay. And so long as we meet the requirement for the government uh, in terms of uh, this particular. Uh, difficult time, uh, everything will be able to go on well. Once you give an opportunity, I know Kenya is ready uh, to host the tournament, any tournament, uh, because we've already seen what has happened and if this, uh, this particular, in fact, we hosted at a very difficult uh, time. But now as things are easing up, it is even easier for us to host the tournaments. Uh -huh. Wow. Thank you, Malim, for okay. coming through. Fine. Yeah. Always a pleasure speaking to you and sharing your good insights on this particular show. Of course, Malim Combo, Director, Kenya Rugby Union, in charge of youth development. He's been doing a lot of good work in terms of ensuring that we qualify for World Cup. Uh, in the future, he remains optimistic that that can happen, considering what is being done right now in terms of talent search and developing the young players who are passionate about the sport and also he remains confident that at yeah, the Vancouver Sevens which is first leg of HSBC World Seven Series Kenya has got what it takes to make it to the quarterfinal stage in their tricky but manageable pool of Mexico, Spain and South Africa. We're looking forward to see how that pans out. Hopefully some of us will be awake tonight to watch that South African game. I think that will be about what most watching time yeah, it's that a big, everyone is looking forward to. Yeah, it's a big match and uh, if we're able to wake up during the Olympics, why <laughs> not? <laughs> well, Celebrating about the goal for uh, our marathon as Eliud. Yeah, sure. And we managed to wake up during late at night. So tonight, it is not an exception. Of course, it's been nice talking to you. Thank you for coming through, Malim. Oh, okay, thank of you. Of course, we're still here until 3 o'clock. Don't go away. Stay tuned. Touchline continues and always a pleasure having you on board. Stay tuned.